Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be using lots of products. This is Kind People. I thought I was going to use it. I didn't. I did use Awesome to the Core, uh, On the Line Fall Florals, Grateful Gatherings, and this Burlap uh, 3D embossing folder, which is fantastic. We're going to start there. So here I've just picked out two neutrals. One is a warmer neutral, which is antique linen. One is a cooler neutral, which is pumice stone. And I wanted to, to use the, I mean, big shock, the 3D embossing folder to add texture. That's what embossing folders do, right? Um, but I wanted it to be a neutral texture because I wanted the coloring uh, and the images to be the star of the show. So this is really just our supporting actor but we're using an older technique to get the look that we want. Um, as you may have gathered from the title of this video, we're mixing new and old. And not just new and old uh, techniques, we're mixing new and old products as well. Uh, this is something if you have watched my videos in the past, you know I'm a big proponent of this. I think that um, you know you want to use what you have, uh, but we all also want new new things. So let's talk about what we're doing, and then we'll come back to that conversation, okay? Um, so here I'm putting down just random spots of antique linen, random spots of pumice stone. I'm going to give the back of my paper a little spray so that I get a nice deep impression. And then I'm going to run this through my Spellbinders Platinum. Here is the burlap texture. Love, love, love it. I think it's, I mean, it looks like linen. It's, it's great. Um, and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to put down a little bit of heavier color. Um, you can do this with brushes, with foams, with whatever you have. I like the brushes for this because I am looking for a lighter application. So it just, the brushes just, you do a, like a smoother blend. Um, and so I'm doing it with both colors, really liking the way that this looks, but I'm going to do one other thing. Here's where the old school kicks in. Do you remember these? This is a making memory standing block. I don't even know if they sell them anymore. I haven't linked my, my products for this video yet, but you could use a block nail file as well or a piece of sandpaper wrapped around a block. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm sanding off the top layer, which is showing through this white. It also gives the paper a really cool texture. It makes it soft, um, which is super cool. So not only can you see it, but you can feel the difference. Love the way that that came out. And that is a for sure old school technique. So if you're a new card maker, you may have never seen that before. Um, but it's definitely, especially with embossing folders kind of coming back in vogue, uh, they that's a great little tool to have on hand. And like I said, you can use a nail um, sanding block. You can get them at Sally Beauty Supply for like 69 cents. Um, you might even be able to get them at the dollar store, honestly. But now the dollar store is up to $1.25. So is that cheaper? I don't know. You'll, you'll have to do some research. But anyway, you don't need the sanding block that I used. You can use what you have. Now we're getting all the stamping out of the way. Uh, I am doing two cards today. Uh, so that's why I have quite a bit of stamping. Um, this little apple, totally loved. Uh, I thought it was so cute. And, you know, for fall, the florals um, are from the florals and the wagon wheel are from the Grateful Gathering set, which is my set uh, that I illustrated for Honey Bee. And then the, um, the on the line floral, fall florals are a bit of an older set. Um, so let's talk about mixing new and old things. Okay. First of all, if you have old things, old does not mean bad and new does not mean good. Okay, let's just talk about that. They're, those things are not synonyms for each other. Uh, you can absolutely use what you have and still love your project. Um, now, I am a person who I like, and I think a lot of people do, uh, you know, companies come out with new things, and like this apple set is new. I love the way that this apple is drawn. I think it's absolutely screams fall. I thought it was um, a great way to kind of incorporate these different elements and get some colorful things in there. Um, and so I wanted to use it. Now, let's say you also love this apple. Maybe you have another Apple set, or maybe you love the burlap 3D embossing folder. There is nothing that says you can't incorporate your new items with your older items. This on the line floor, uh, fall florals, I think is a couple of years old. The pumpkins that we're going to use later on, I can tell you are like 
three or four years old. But every fall, do I get out those pumpkins? Yes, I do. Because they're drawn well. There's pumpkins in my set, but they're a more, mo like a more modern pumpkin and they're part of a larger arrangement. These pumpkins, this pumpkin patch is a great, it's, it's an investment. All stamps are an investment. So don't invest in something and then discard it. I've just seen a lot of posts lately um, where people talk about how they're not using their things and they've just become collectors instead of creators. Um, use your things. Use them. You can. And you can use them with the new stuff. You don't just have to use new stuff. You can use old stuff too. And it will still be beautiful and it will stretch those supplies and it will give you a new look and a different look. These stamps that we're using today came out years apart, but do they make a cohesive look? Absolutely. And there's a couple of things that you can do to kind of ensure that that happens, that they all come together nicely on your card together. Um, so let's talk about some tips on that. Uh, first of all, your color palette. So we got a lot going on here. Um, there's a lot of little leaves and things. Speaking of the little leaves, I'm just going to mention this before we move on. So I'm going to speed up a little bit of the coloring because the leaves, all the coloring is the same. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing for one or two of the leaves, how I'm blending the colors. Um, and then I am going to speed it up just a little bit because we kind of have a lot to a lot to get through uh, since we are making two cards and they have a lot of colored elements on them. I hope that makes sense. Um, for the coloring of the florals, this is uh, pretty typical of the way that I color my florals. There's going to be a deeper color toward the base of the flower where all the petals are gathered. And then where one petal is laying on top of another, there would also be some shadows. Uh, you For the apple, I know we already colored it. I'm just going to touch back on it. There's a, um, the little, what do you call that? The bottom, the, the little four things at the bottom of the apple. I, does that have a name? I don't know. But anyway, they're drawn in here and it's a, it's a really well drawn stamp. Um, so I just accentuated that shape by putting my shadows around the portion that I want to stick out. And then I also added some shadows to the left and right to give it a little bit of a more round appearance. Uh, for the rest of the leaves, pretty much I'm just going, um, using that same rule where if it's behind something, I'm adding shadows and almost all of these leaves are tucked behind. I am going to do a little bit of color blending between families. And in order to be successful with your color blending between families, if you're using Copic markers, you want to look at that very last number. That last number is going to tell you whether or not they'll blend well together. So you don't want to mix a two with a nine. You want to mix a three with a four or a four with a four or a three with a five. Like they should be close together to get them to mix well. I would highly recommend trying it off your project first just to make sure you're happy with the blend before you take it to your project. Okay. So anyway, I've been seeing a lot of posts where people are like, you know, I'm just a, a collector. And um, that just breaks my heart because being creative just fills a piece of my soul. Like God just made me to make things and it makes my heart happy um, and relieves my stress and gives me a break. And it's my me time, even though it's my job, it still fills those purposes for the most part. There are some times where it's like stressful. There's a lot of releases or um, I, one of my kids is maybe down and out. And so it's kind of creating a little bit of havoc with some deadlines that I have. But for the most part, it, it it makes me happy to make things. And it's not always just cards. It's cross-stitch. It's painting. It's doing furniture. It's just the act of creating and making something from nothing or, or making something completely different than what it started um, makes my heart happy. So to make these work well together, first of all, you want to pick images that work well together. So we have some fall florals, with some fall items. The apple is more of a fall item. Um, the pumpkin, obviously, definitely more of a fall item. Um, the the Gerber daisies, these are more, um, I don't necessarily know that they're fall, but they, they work. Um, and if you, the wagon wheel definitely has that fall kind of 
country-ish vintage vibe, which I really like. Um, so when you're looking at your items, don't necessarily look at the line weight. We can fix the line weight. These two stamps are two different line weights and we're going to fix them um, later on and I'll show you how I do that. Uh, but yeah, so you, when you're just looking at your images, make sure your images go together. That's true of any card design, honestly. The next thing is your color palette. So because we have so much going on here, we want to make sure our color palette is not too busy and is harmonious. So how do we select good colors? The easiest one that you can pick is complementary colors, which would be like an orange and a blue, a red and a green. Um, those are complementary colors. They're across from each other on the color wheel. But because we have so much going on in here and we need so many colors, I went with what they call an analogous color combination, which that means they're next to each other on the color wheel. So I started with red and then I went all the way to green, but I used a red, a red orange, an orange, a yellow orange, a yellow, a yellow green, and then that's where I stopped. I didn't go all the way to green green, I guess. Um, but they're all next to each other, which means they're all going to play nice. They're all going to be friends. A lot of warm tones in this card because we're using that portion of the color wheel, not a lot of cools. Um, but you could absolutely, if you wanted to do a more um, complementary color scheme, you could do oranges and some navy leaves. That would be beautiful. Um, you could do some blue greens and some red oranges. That would be really nice. Um, so just that. The other thing is incorporate your neutrals. So when you pick your color scheme, you you want to make sure you incorporate some neutrals to balance everything, and it's going to help everything look um, really continuous and like it belongs together. So for my neutrals, because all of my colors are super warm, I chose a cool brown. That's the 70s family. It's a much cooler brown, but it creates some contrast and it makes it more interesting to look at. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Kelly, that's hysterical. You have so much going on here as if you could need more interest. True. <laughs> I don't deny that there is a lot happening in these cards. Um, but the cool brown just, it, it really does just add some more interest because and some contrast because everything is super warm. So for these little palms, um, I did line them, you know, each individual line, that can be a little bit challenging if you're not comfortable with your markers. So if you don't want them to be too dark, instead of doing your shading all the way down the line, just add a little triangle of shading toward the end and some little flicks of color towards the middle, and that will still give you lots of dimension without overwhelming your little palm with dark. I skipped over the coloring of the wheel. I have a video in which I colored this exact same wheel with different colors, but I did it the same way. Basically, your spoke should be a little bit darker than the rest of your wheel, and that's how I colored it. So moving on to the centers of the flowers, we're just going to continue this same brown uh, throughout the whole card. I did mix up my flower centers. So like these flowers, these daisies have a darker center, whereas the flower that is in the um, the line, it has a yellow center. So just different. Here's where I'm going to bring back in that neutral. I have these two large flowers. They are different flowers. That doesn't matter to me because I'm just looking at the color scheme. Um, and so I'm going to color them like this cream color to match that burlap that we inked. Um, and so I chose really light colors and I'm going to leave a little bit of white in there as well. I'm, white is going to be my highlight color uh, for both these and the daisies. So don't forget to incorporate your neutrals. It'll help everything look like it's not as busy and just give your eye some place to rest. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's just another, another tip there. I just, I guess this is story time for today because I just want to encourage you that like, we all like having new things. Of course we do. And, um, you know, there's new things that come out that are different, but don't think that like, oh, I can never buy anything new because I have all this old stuff I haven't used. You can pick out one or two new things and incorporate them, but 
Conversely, don't forget about the well-loved ones that you have in your bins that are collecting dust, because you can bring them together and make them harmonious and get as much as you can out of this investment. I mean, like I said, there's a reason why we buy stamps and not stickers, because stamps you can use over and over and over again. And if you're bringing in a new piece, um, you know, maybe it's just like I said, just like an embossing folder or just like a, a one new stamp set and combining them, it will give you more mileage out of it. And it, this, for me, I guess maybe because I have seen these conversations and because also like we're cleaning out my old stamps, there are some stamps that like, even though I'll never make another dollar off of, like I still love them and I kept them. Like, <laughs> I, I just, because they're well drawn and they're good and they're things that I know that I will use. So now let's talk about the line weight. You want your stamps to look like they go together. And these succulents have a little bit of a thicker line weight, and so does the pumpkin, uh, because it's a little bit of an older set, than the uh, daisies and the wagon and the um, little leaves and accoutrements. So I'm going to go in, I'm using a fine line pen, um, and I'm just going to outline these. And I'm outlining them with a little bit of a thicker pen so that their line weight matches, and now everything looks like it very easily could have come from the same set. Somebody recently asked me in one of my videos, like, you used to out outline everything, why don't you anymore? And it's not that I never outline anything. I have just gotten more selective about what I will take the time to outline. Also, because dyes have become more popular, and originally, speaking of dyes, that's what I'm doing here. Uh, if you're not familiar with the On the Line series from Honeybee, they have a top and a bottom so you can cut out the whole piece or just the top portion or just the bottom portion which makes them super versatile and I love that um, but I am going to be cutting out the whole piece for both of my cards so you just line up the top and the bottom and then tape them in place and run them through um, but anyway because die cutting has become so much more popular there are some things that I am coloring that don't have a black outline um, because it's a die. <laughs> so here is where I realized I should have stamped the pumpkin. Not that the wagon wheel isn't cute on its own, but it really just needed a little bit more color. So I did the same thing, um, you know, stamped it in the no line, or no line, the Be Creative um, Intense Black Ink. And now I'm just going to go in. The colors I was showing you there is... Uh, so a lot of my leaves, I did a red-orange, which means my color combination was a Y38, a YR04, a YR09, and an R29. So it's giving me that reddish-orange. I wanted a true orange for the pumpkin, so I just swapped out the darkest color instead of using an R29. I dropped that. Now my darkest color is a YR09 and my lightest color is a Y08. So I dropped the red and added a yellow and this is going to give me a much brighter orange, which is still in that same color family. Um, but we just swapped it, the look of it, by just changing out one marker. Something to keep in mind, especially if you don't have a lot of markers, um, you can get more mileage out of them by just rearranging what colors you're using together without having to purchase a separate marker. So here I'm going to stamp uh, the sentiments in the uh, Brilliant White Pigment Ink, and then I am going to heat emboss them um, with white detail embossing ink. So anywho, that's just, I guess, my PSA for today. You're, you can use them both together, and you can make them work. And there are some tips and tricks that will help along the way with that, but don't, I guess, it doesn't have to be extremes. You don't have to be a, I'm not buying anything. Or maybe you do. Maybe that's just where you're at in life and that's totally fine as well. And you just want to use your stash. More power to you. But you also don't have to have all of everything every single time. You know what I'm saying? Like there's a happy medium where you can still use what you love and what you have and incorporate maybe one or two new things. That's just what I try to do. Um, because I just, you know, it's an investment and I want to get, I'm cheap, y'all. I'm so cheap. I just want to get the most out of what I have. So here I wanted to show you because we have this like super neutral burlap background, you can use it um, either way. You can use it as a background for your items, which is what we're going to do on this card, or you can use it as an accent, which is what we're going to do on the second card. 
So to put my cards together, I am going to, I did trim this in half. I didn't make two burlap pieces. Uh, I didn't need to. There was no need. I was using half and half. Well, three quarters and a quarter, I guess. Um, but so anyway, this on the line is going to be my dividing piece in between my two, my regular white cardstock and my burlap. And so I'm just going to hold this in place while I kind of lay out my other items. And then I'm going to get busy gluing. So everything is going to be glued down flat, uh, except for the portion that is the on the line. For that, I am going to use foam tape to have it popped up. Like I said, right now I'm just holding it in place so that I can get the uh, proper placement for the rest of my items. Um, and then for the second card, I did not show you that, me putting that together because it's the same thing, um, but I did exactly the same thing. Everything's glued flat except for the florals that are on the line. Those are popped up on foam tape. Speaking of foam tape, I used a very low profile foam tape. Uh, this is Honeybee's strips of foam tape, and I think it's the, it's like a 30 seconds of an inch or something. I can't remember. It's very low profile because I didn't want them to be hugely popped up, but I did want them to have enough oomph that um, they sat up above the other items since everything is tucked behind them. Here, what I'm doing is I tucked my palm into the right-hand side. This is to balance that brown of the, like, I have this large wagon wheel that's brown, and then I have this one little stick that's brown. Adding in the palm is just going to add some balance. So there's brown in the left top and brown brown in the bottom right. Why was that so hard to say? I don't know. And then the same thing with the green. So I added a little bit of green on the left and then a little bit of green on the right. Again, just trying to create that balance. Here are those little foam strips I was telling you about. Um, so I put those all on there. And you may notice that this um, little strip is actually a little bit longer than my A2 size card. Uh, that's no problem. I'm just going to flip it over and I'm just going to trim off that excess. These, scissors, these scissors are so old. I told you guys I'm cheap. I need to like clean them. I, I just used them to cut things that I shouldn't have. You know how like people have fabric scissors and they're like, never cut anything else with my fabric scissors. Uh, I cut everything with these scissors and so I've probably ruined them. That was my own doing. Uh, but anyway, I need to clean them up and see if I can possibly salvage them. Um, if not, I mean, I've had them since I started cart, literally since I started cart making. So if uh, if I have to purchase new ones, I suppose they've done their due diligence and ran their, their course. So here, this sentiment is actually from the um, on the line fall florals, and it just says, thank you for your kindness. The other one, the other sentiment is from the awesome to the core. I plan on sending these cards. I didn't even mention the auction silly me. So Honeybee has tons of stuff they're uh, doing in the auction as well. If you're not familiar, um, my friend Tina, which is also friends with the Melissa and um, from Honeybee who owns Honeybee and Lisa. And anyway, so she was diagnosed with cancer. They're doing a massive auction over on Instagram. There's tons of stuff up um, to be bid on. And that started yesterday. It goes through the 19th, I believe. Um, so you can head over there. Honeybee's giving, like, donating tons of stuff to be bid on. And um, just really, really great. Such a generous company. Such wonderful people. Um, and so, yeah, you can head over there and check that out if you're interested in bidding. I am giving away three cards. Um, they're like kind of art panels. And then uh, also my friend Dawn and I, who I'm sure you've seen on the Honeybee channel as well, um, she and I are doing a virtual craft uh, retreat. So we will, whoever bids on that one, will get to hang out with us and make cards or whatever they want to learn. Um, so anyway, I added some white highlights, which again makes everything a little bit more cohesive. I added the shimmer because it just makes me happy. And now I am going to use the, I think this is the Harvest Pearls. Happy Harvest. Harvest. Har har yeah, it's Harvest Pearl stickers. And these are just the perfect color for fall. So I picked some yellowish gold ones and then also some dark red ones. And then that's it. That's both cards. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope this inspires you to use what you have with what you maybe have recently purchased. Um, I look forward to seeing what you make. I always appreciate your time. Thank you for spending it with me. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.